Hello everyone, I am Dr. Shiv Kumar, Assistant Professor of Physics. So in this video session, I will be talking about few important topics under the conservation of linear momentum unit. So this particular unit is a part of Mysore University syllabus for the first semester students. The important topics which I will be discussing in this session are elastic head-on collision and elastic oblique collision in a laboratory frame and then the concept of reduced mass. Of course, the important learning objectives are to understand the theory of elastic head-on collision and then to understand the theory of elastic oblique collision in a laboratory frame and to understand the concept of reduced mass. Coming to the elastic head-on collision, an elastic collision in which colliding particles move along the same straight line both before and after collision is known as an elastic head-on collision. This collision, this type of collision is also known as collision in one dimension because both before and after collision the particles or colliding particles will be moving, moving along a single straight line. So now consider two particles A and B of masses M1 and M2 moving along the same straight line with velocities u1 and u2. So now these two particles undergo collision and after collision let the particles move along the same straight line with velocities v1 and v2. So now applying the law of conservation of momentum for this collision we will get m1 u1 plus m2 u2 this gives us the total initial momentum which is equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2 which is the total final momentum. So now in the first terms on both the sides we have m1 as common. If we take m1 as common you will get v1 minus u1 which is equal to in the second terms on both sides we have m2 as common. If we take minus m2 as common you will get minus m2 into v2 minus u2 let it be equation 2. So now since the collision is elastic the total kinetic energy is conserved in this collision. So therefore the total initial kinetic energy equal to total final kinetic energy. The total initial kinetic energy is half m1 u1 square plus half m2 u2 square which is equal to the total final kinetic energy half m1 v1 square plus half m2 v2 square. So now in all the four terms we have half as common so therefore you can cancel that half and then in the first terms uh, first term on both the sides we have m1 as common if we take m1 as common we will get v1 square minus u1 square similarly in the other two terms we can take minus m2 as common if we take that as common we will get m2 into v2 square minus u2 square. So let it be equation 3. So now divide this equation 3 by equation 2 we will get m1 into v1 square minus u1 square can be written as v1 plus u1 into v1 minus u1 divide by m1 into v1 minus u1 equal to minus m2 into v2 square minus u2 square can be written as v2 plus u2 into v2 minus u2 divide by minus m2 into v2 minus u2. So now on the left hand side m1 into v1 minus u1 and in the denominator we have m1 into v1 minus u1. You can cancel those factors. Similarly on the right hand side minus m2 into v2 minus u2. In the denominator we have minus m2 into v2 minus u2. You can cancel that minus m2 into v2 minus u2. We will get v1 plus u1 on the left hand side which is equal to v2 plus u2 from the right hand side. So therefore if we take that v2 to the left hand side and u1 to the right hand side we will get v1 minus v2 equal to minus of u1 minus u2. Let it be equation 4. So now v1 minus v2 represents the relative velocities of the two particles after collision and u1 minus u2 represent the relative velocity of the two particles before collision. So therefore, we can say that in an elastic head-on collision, the magnitude of relative velocity remains same, whereas its direction is reversed because we have a minus sign on the right hand side. Therefore, 
magnitude remains same but the direction is reversed so now from the equation 4 we can write v2 as v1 plus u1 minus u2 let it be equation 5 now substituting for v2 in equation 1 that is the conservation of momentum equation v we will get m1 u1 plus m2 u2 which is equal to m1 v1 plus m2 into v2 is nothing but v1 plus u1 minus u2 so now uh, taking v1 as common on the right hand side we will get v1 into m1 plus m2 that is from that second term this is equal to again taking uh, that m2 and u1 to the left hand side and if you take u1 as common in those two terms we will get m1 minus m2 plus taking that m2 into u2 to the left hand side it becomes plus m2 into u2 and we have one m2 u2 on the left hand side if we add those two we will get 2 into m2 u2 so now cross multiplying that m1 plus m2 we will get v1 as m1 minus m2 divided by m1 plus m2 into u1 plus 2 m2 divided by m1 plus m2 into u2 let it be equation 6 so now substituting this value of v1 in the equation 5 we will get v2 as m1 minus m2 divided by m1 plus m2 into u1 plus 2 m2 divided by m1 plus m2 into u2 plus u1 minus u2 so now in the first and third term we have u1 as common similarly in the second and fourth term u2 as common so now taking that u1 and u2 as common and simplifying it we will get v2 as 2 m1 divided by m1 plus m2 into u1 plus m2 minus m1 divided by m1 plus m2 into u2 let it be equation 7 so now equation 6 and equation 7 give us the velocity final velocities of the particles a and p okay so now suppose if we assume the particle b to be initially at rest then u2 will be equal to 0 if we substitute u2 is equal to 0 in equation 6 and 7 we will get v1 and v2 as v1 is equal to m1 minus m2 divided by m1 plus m2 into u1 similarly equation 7 becomes v2 is equal to 2 m1 divided by m1 plus m2 into u1 so let it be equation 9 so now equations 8 and 9 represent or give us the final velocities of the particles a and b okay now considering few special cases in the case 1 suppose if m1 and m2 that means if the both the colliding particles are identical then v1 becomes 0 if we use this condition in equation 8 and 9 we will get v1 as 0 and v2 as u1 so that means when a particle with certain velocity collides with another identical particle at rest then particle a comes to rest or the first particle comes to rest whereas the second particle is going to move with the initial velocity of the first particle or else in general we can say that the particles exchange their velocities after collision similarly considering another case where m2 is very large when compared to m1 so that is the target molecule or the particle which is at rest is very massive when compared to the particle which is moving with certain initial velocity in that case if we use this condition in equations 8 and 9 we will get v1 as minus u1 and v2 as nearly equal to 0 so therefore we can say that the particle a rebounds with its initial velocity whereas the particle b will remain almost at rest so uh, for example if we throw a ball against a wall ball rebounds with velocity whereas the wall remain at, remain stationary similarly if we drop a ball on the ground ball will bounce back with almost the same velocity whereas earth will remain stationary without any uh, change of momentum or without moving 
So now considering the third case where if M1 is very large when compared to M2 and substituting this in equations 8 and 9, we will get V1 as U1 and V2 as 2U1. So that means the particle A continues to move with its initial velocity whereas the particle B which is a smaller particle moves with twice the initial velocity of A. So these are three special cases when M1 is equal to M2, when M2 is very large when compared to M1 and when M1 is very large when compared to M2. So this is about the elastic head-on collision. So next coming to the elastic oblique collision in a laboratory frame. So that means, so this kind of a situation comes when we do collision experiments in laboratory. When one particle, so which, which is at rest, is made to collide with another particle which is moving with certain velocity. In such cases, we come across these types of collisions. In general, the one of the particle or one of the colliding particles will be initially at rest. That particle is generally called as the target. Whereas the other particle collides with the first is generally known as the projectile. The particle which is moving is projectile, whereas the particle which is at rest is known as the target. After collision, the particles move off at different angles as shown in the picture here. A small particle m1 which is moving with certain velocity u1 collides with second particle m2 which is massive which is at rest and after collision they move away in different directions making certain angle with the initial direction. So now let a particle b of mass m2 be initially at rest on the x-axis. Let another particle a of mass m1 moving with moving along the x-axis with a velocity u1 collides with let's say the particle b. So now let a moves with a velocity v1 making an angle theta with the x-axis after collision. Similarly the particle b moves with a velocity v2 making an angle phi with the x-axis. Usually theta is known as the scattering angle that is angle made by the projectile with the x-axis after collision is known as scattering angle. Similarly, phi is known as the angle of recoil. So this is nothing but the angle made by the target molecule with the x-axis after collision. Okay. Now coming back to this picture, here M1 is uh, the projectile, M2 is mass of the target and M1 is moving with velocity U1. So now after collision, M1 is making an angle V1 with the x-axis, uh, moving with velocity V1, making, ang making an angle theta with the x-axis. Similarly, the particle, second particle or the target particle is moving with the velocity V2, making an angle phi with the x-axis. So now we can resolve uh, that V1 and V2 along x and y direction. Suppose if we resolve v1, we will get v1 cos theta as the component along x axis. Similarly, v1 sin theta, the component along y axis. Likewise, if we resolve v2 into two rectangular components, we will get v2 cos phi along x axis. Similarly, minus v2 sin phi in the y direction. So now, Applying the law of conservation of momentum along x and y directions, x and y directions, we will get m1 u1 which is the total initial momentum along x, x, x axis equal to m1 v1 cos theta plus m2 v2 cos phi. So the right hand side is the total final momentum after collision. Similarly, applying the law of conservation of momentum in a direction perpendicular to the x-axis or along y direction, we get m1 v1 sin theta minus m2 v2 sin phi is equal to 0. 0 is the total initial momentum in y direction. 
m1 v1 sin theta minus m2 v2 sin phi represents the total final momentum. The negative sign is because m2 v2 sin phi will be acting in negative y direction. So now for an elastic collision, the kinetic energy is also conserved. So in this oblique collision, the kinetic energy is also conserved. So therefore, applying the law of conservation of energy, we will get half m1 u1 square, which is the total initial kinetic energy equal to half m1 v1 square plus half m2 v2 square, the total final kinetic energy. So now we have two, three equations, in fact, uh, equation 10, equation 11 and equation 12. And here, suppose if m1, m2 and u1 are known, and there are four unknown quantities, v1, v2, theta and phi. So three quantities are known, whereas four quantities are unknown, and we have three equations. So therefore, with the help of three equations, we will not be able to determine the four unknowns. So therefore, so any one of these four unknowns, v1, v2, theta or phi should be known in order to calculate the other unknown values. So therefore, uh, knowing the values of m1, m2, u1 and any one of uh, the quantities like v1, v2, theta or phi, we can calculate the remaining quantities. So for, to take few examples of elastic collision in laboratory frame, elastic oblique collision in laboratory frame, the collisions of particles such as electrons, neutrons, protons or any other elementary particles. So all these collisions can be taken as an example of elastic oblique collisions. So now moving on to the next important concept that is reduced mass. So this reduced mass is an hypothetical concept. So this reduced mass is the value of a hypothetical mass or an imaginary mass introduced in order to simplify the mathematical description of motion of two particle system. Suppose for an inertial observer, the relative motion of a system of two particles. So we have an initial observer and he is observing the relative motion of two particles. A two particle system is being observed by an inertial observer. So now, so when we observe the two particle system, the movement of two particles will be very tedious. That means to observe or to analyze that particular problem will be very tedious because lot of variables will be involved. So therefore, if we can reduce the two body system into a single body system, then the problem will be very easy. So by using the concept of reduced mass, we can reduce the two particle system into a single particle system. So now whatever the mass of that single hypothetical particle we are talking about, its mass is known as the reduced mass. Suppose if m1 and m2 are the two interacting particles, then the reduced mass is given by mu is equal to m1 m2 divided by m1 plus m2. So the concept of reduced mass effectively by introducing this mu, we can effectively reduce the two particle system into a one particle system. So that is the equations of motion of two mutually interacting particles can be reduced to a single equation describing the motion of one single particle in a reference frame centered in the other particle. So like this, using the concept of reduced mass, we can reduce a two body system or two body problem into a single body problem, which is relatively easier to analyze. Uh, I hope you have understood what I was trying to explain. So in this session, we have discussed elastic head-on collision and then we calculated the final velocities of the particles and then uh, we have uh, analyzed another important uh, situation that is elastic oblique collision in a laboratory frame which is very helpful while dealing with the collision experiments related to subatomic particles and then we have also understood the concept of uh, qualitatively we, we understood the, we have understood the concept of reduced mass 